right, we have one more type of graph we're gonna look at in chapter two, and they're called stem and leaf diagrams. So instead of like doing number lines and bars and scales, we just kind of organize the list into this thing called a stem and a leaf. So we're gonna start with the stem on the left side and the leaf on the right side. So if you look at 32, the three is the stem and the two is the leaf. So that tells me we have 32. Um, if you wanted to look at 16, the stem is one and the leaf is six. It's kind of a weird graph. Most of us have probably never seen this, um, but it allows us to kind of see the individual data values while still kind of looking at shapes. So let's just make one and see how we feel about it. So I started it just for the first one to save a little bit of time. I already did the tens and the twenties in this one, but we're looking at um, 40 students, uh, oh, 40 math classes, and we looked at the number of students taking the final. So one class had 31 students, another class had 32, um, things like that. So my stems are tens, twenties, thirties, and forties. And then the second digit goes on the right. So I did the tens and twenties just to save a little bit of time. So let's find all the thirties. Just gonna circle them and then we'll start making that. Let's see, any more? I think I got them all. So I'm gonna um, do the stem. I kind of prefer to do it in order because I think it's easier to read. So I would do 30 before 31. So since 30 shows up twice, I'm gonna put zero twice, one for each of the 30s. And then I'll put a one for 31, so 31. 32, I'll put a two, and 33, I'll put a three. And then let's just make sure we got them all. I don't see any other 30s. And then 40s, I think there's only one 40, and I lost it, there it is, 40. So there's only a 42, so we'll go ahead and put a two. And that is a stem leaf. It's kind of a funny looking graph, <laughs> but sometimes it has its use. We'll see that in a little bit. But if someone wanted to see the individual data values while looking for patterns, this can be useful. Um, so what are class descriptions? So class descriptions are what each row represents. So if I were to put this in a group table, group data table, what would that first column be? So the first row would be 10 through 19. That's a class description. The second row would be 20 through 29. So those are my class descriptions. And then the next one, even though we stop at 33, technically it goes up to 39. It just doesn't show up, right? These are all the same size. And then the last one, even though it only covers 42 um, in this data set, any number between 40 and 49 would go in that row. So 40 through 49 is the class description. We just happen to only have 42. Um, so what we like to do sometimes is we like to split the lines to spread it out a little. Um, so rather than doing 10 through 19, we could do 10 through 14 and then 15 through 19. Right, cut off at five because that's halfway. Right, 20 through 24 and then 25 through 29. So you'll see one show up twice, you'll see two show up twice, and so on. Just so the data's, just this line is really long, so someone might want to shorten it a little. So we're going to go through the one row, and we're going to split it up. So zero through four goes in the first row, so zero, four, four, same data. And then the five through nines go in the second row. So it's just the data from above. Right, so there's two fives because 15 showed up twice. There's three sixes because 16 showed up three times. And then I did all the other rows for you, um, so you can check it out. Um, so the next row is 20 through 24, so up through four, and then five goes in the next one. 30 through 35 would go here. There is no five, that's fine. And then we're not gonna skip 35 through 39. It just happens to be empty, and then we jump to the 40s. So the class descriptions are different here. So rather than 10 through 19, we cut it into half. So 10 through 14 and 15 through 19, right? 20 through 24, 25 through 29. 
So if I put this in a group data table, this is what that first column would be. Um, the next one would be 30 through 34, and then 35 through 39, and then we stopped at 40 through 44. We don't need 45 through 49 because it's empty. We never start or end with an empty class. So let's do a few notes about it and then let's make one from scratch. So the vertical line must be drawn in to separate the stems and the leaves. So that was this vertical line. The spacing of the number should be careful and consistent so it's not misleading. Um, so notice my numbers are the same size. Um, don't do 0, 4, 4, and then 5, 5, 6, 6, 6, right? That's misleading. So keep your handwriting the same size. And then the leaves are always only one digit. So the right side is one digit. So sometimes we have numbers that are more than two digits. And so it's okay for the stem to have more. Um, and so it doesn't have to be the ones place. We'll see in the next examples, it can be any place value. Um, and then the stems can be any other. So on this next example, my leaf will have to be tenths. So the leaf is always the right digit, which is the tenths place here. That's the place value. So then just to make it easier for the reader, when we make the graph, we're just gonna say the leaf equals tenths. So someone doesn't think 0 0.05 is five or 1.1, we don't want them to think it's 11. So let's make a stem and a leaf. So it looks like we, I have the data in order, which is nice. So we'll, we start at zero. And in the zero row, we have a five and a seven. And then the, this tells me that it's 0.5 and 0.7 by writing leaf equals tenths on top. And then in the one row, we have 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.2, 1, 1, 1, 2. 3, 5, 5, 7, 7, 8, and 9. And then again, because it says tenths, it means 1.1, 1 .1, not 11. 1 1.2, not 12. 2. So for 2, we have 0, 2, 5, 6, 8, 8. And that's it. Notice I'm trying to keep my numbers about the same size. For the threes, we have five and eight, so 3.5, 3.8. For the fours, we have 4.4, 4.8, 4 4.9. 4 Fives, we have two, five, seven. And then we also have an eight. It looks like I'm getting a little misleading. Notice this is smaller than this. So I'm going to put these numbers a little bit closer together. And then it's tempting to jump to 8, but that's misleading. So we have to have 6. There's just no data in the 6s. We have to have 7. There's just no data in the 7s. And then we'll jump to 8 and say 8.0. And that is our stem leaf. So again, class descriptions are what does each row represent? So each row, the first row is 0, 0.0 through 0 0.9. Remember, it's not 0 through 9 because of the decimal place. All right, the second one, you might be tempted to say 10 through 19, but again, it's 1.0 through 1.9. This one, the next one was 2.0 through 2.9, right, and so on. So continue all the way through. Eight, so 4 to 4.9. Right, 5 to 5.9. Notice they're all the same width. That's important. And then end at 8 to 8.9. Right, they're all the same width. They're the same size. If they're not the same size, that's misleading. So let me know if you have questions. Um, the way to really figure out class description is to pay attention to the decimal place of the leaf. So let's make one more. Um, maybe we decided we want to do two 
lines per stem. We just decided maybe we want the data a little bit more spread out. So I'm gonna actually just do it on the side so we can look at the data while we do it. So this is C, two lines. So that means we're gonna go from zero. Since we start at 0 0.5, we don't need the, um, we don't need zero twice because the first one would be empty. And then what, right, everything shows up twice. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, and eight. And so we're cutting off at the five mark. So one to 1.4, and then the next one starts at 1.5. It's always cut off at five because that's halfway. So zero would get five and seven, and then one, right? We're cutting in half. Zero through four, and then five through nine. So one, one, two, three, and then five, five, seven, seven, eight, nine. So sometimes people just prefer the data more spread out. So the twos again, right, just cut off zero through four, five through nine. Feeling confident, keep going without me. Um, threes, we don't have anything from zero through four, so we skip the first one and jump to the second one. That'll allow us to see gaps in the data, so it's useful. Fours, so zero through four, and then five through nine. Five, we have the two, and then five, seven, eight. The next couple are empty, and we jump to eight. We get 8.0, and then we never end with empty, so we get rid of the second eight. And this one kind of allows us to see maybe some gaps a little bit better. So I'll get rid of the orange so we can see it better. I think they're both useful, but I think the one on the right... Um, some of the gaps stand out a little bit better. I accidentally erased some of the numbers. Let me throw them back in. Um, I think that the 8.0 stands out more on the second graph to me. Um, this cluster stands out more to me, but maybe you're different. But that's a stem leaf plot. So either if it just, if we do a stem leaf plot, we'll do the one on the right. If we say two lines per stem, we're going to do double of every digit. And again, we should still write leaf equals tenths, so the reader knows. So this is a weird graph, I know. It's probably new, uh, but it does allow us to see individual data values, which is nice.